God in my wits. I'll never be hungry again. With that famous film quote, Gone with the Wind stands as the perfect movie for us to cover this Thanksgiving. The infamous 1939 Best Picture winner, starring Vivian Leigh, Clark Gable, and Olivia de Havilland, about the fall and rebirth of the South during the Civil War and Reconstruction, still stands today as the most successful film ever released at a worldwide gross of nearly three and a half billion dollars adjusted for inflation. Yet through the years, the film has become a topic of hot debate, with screenings banned over the summer due to its controversial nature. Some outlets even went so far as to claim that the movie was akin to a Confederate statue that should be taken down. With that being said, as we take on everything by default on Default Assault, we have invited our regular guest host Tokyo Jameson to help us tackle this heated issue without restraints. Is Gone with the Wind required viewing? Hello and welcome to Default Assault, where we take on everything by default, and tonight we'll be taking on quite a bit by default, where we have our special guest, Mr. TJ, back for another required viewing. How's it going, TJ? All is well here. Glad to be in the place and ready to take this on by default with you, brother. Let's go. Fantastic. And Kyle, how's it going? always a good time when you have tokyo j in here you kidding me let's do this (laughs) from my understanding neither of you had actually seen this film before yeah i hadn't seen it before and and there were only a few key scenes that i had actually uh you know heard of you know it was kind of like with the godfather there's a few scenes you already knew just by accident you know and, and there was a couple of those in there too but this was the first time i put on the swim cap and dove into the four hour experience that was Gone with the Wind. And that's really the best word I could use without giving th- anything away is experience uh, at this point. So I'm just going to leave it at that. I, I knew that, you know, it was going to be hopping, hopping in the DeLorean and going, you know, back in time and, and, and seeing how things were. But I, I, I really didn't know what to truly expect because I wanted to fully take in the situation and fully experience it. I didn't want to go in with any bias one way or the other. So I, because of you and because I wanted to do this for a while now, I just, I took it in, you know, a hundred percent. And, and it was an experience. Now that you did see the film, what, what are your, your, your your thoughts on it? You know, it kind of matched what I sort of expected going into it. Um, It was the American answer to a Bronte novel, basically, right? Um, Scarlett O'Hara is probably one of the biggest pains in the butt that I've seen. Um, The term first world problems paints this character incredibly nice. And and the only difference between, you know, being uh, like a Jane Eyre or something like that is the fact that it was from the point of view of said American aristocrat. Now, for those who don't know what a Bronte novel is, these are all the British people, the kind of stuff that you see movies on about and uh on pbs you know stereotypically oh yes try the poll yes so uh gone with the wind being a book first kind of gave me that feel that this was the american answer to a bronze novel not that that was necessarily the intent but that was certainly the look and feel of the piece i i have to point out it's kind of funny that you mentioned bronte because the other uh, another big film that was nominated for best picture in 1939 was wuthering heights with Laurence olivier there you go <laughs> The punchline to all that is if you're going to speak of well, I keep saying American aristocracy, if you're going to speak of Southern American uh, aristocracy at the time, especially when Gone with the Wind takes place, um, you would have to have plantation owners and that lifestyle in play there. It's 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 just what would be thoroughly accurate at the time that the book was written, regardless, regardless of the fact that the movie was done in 1939 Um, and and. I feel like the uh, scene 
is kind of well captured with that in mind. The, the, I, I liken it now. This is a random comparison that you never would have expected, nor did I. Just as the 300 was written as if Greeks had had access to movies and were writing a myth, you know, if if somebody who was trying to write a glorified story of the Confederacy in, in the theme of a Bronte novel, you now have Gone with the Wind. Now I'm expect I'm 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 really visualizing uh, get, uh, Gerald Butler as Rhett Butler and <laughs> dude, I like him telling Scarlett he doesn't give a damn with those big ass pecs. Hell yeah! This is blasphemy. This is madness. Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. <laughs> So TJ, what what were your thoughts on on the film? First world problems that that that, that just keeps echoing in my head, man. Because seeing the movie and knowing about you know knowing about the things that I've experienced in my own life, it's like I realized they're sitting here worried about you know having a, a social gathering when a war is getting ready to pop off for the freedom of a people. And, you know, a, a people being actually, you know, seen as people and not property. Connect, I connected with Mammy and I thought it was hilarious to, you know, hear her critiquing, you know, the people that she's working for whenever she mumbles to herself. You know, I, I, I would get a kick out of that, man. I would laugh at that. Um, so, and, and, and one thing that, you know, I, I, I tried to, you know, think about how I wanted to explain it. And I, I thought about, you know, Scarlett, I'm saying, if Scarlett were alive today, she would be perceived as one of the most thirsty hoes ever. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I mean, and it's, it's hilarious to say that. And I apologize. I wasn't trying to be crass, but I mean, it's just that that that's the that's the way she would be perceived. And she would probably be uh, an overnight celebrity. You know, she would definitely be, you know, Kardashian famous, but she would also be extremely thirsty. So, but but looking at the movie, I, I it was done, it, it it was done like like Kyle said, uh, basically a glorified, you know, wet dream of somebody who wanted to make the Confederacy look nice, and you know they wanted they wanted to get you you know to sympathize and they wanted to glorify it. It's like, hey, it's 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 a, it's a snuff film for for the the Confederate flag, you know just. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, you know, this this grand thing. And 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 having seen it, and I said I came into it with no bias at all. I don't know, man. Any conversation when it when it deals with with uh, with a film, especially one as sensitive as this. Well, yeah, we're gonna go some places. And uh, my whole belief has always been that instead of uh, tiptoeing around and pretending that. This kind of stuff has, you know, didn't happen in history or, or so forth, or at least putting a blind eye on it. Well, you're never going to solve any problems. You're never going to be able to address issues, and you'll never be able to be wary of things to avoid doing so in the future. Uh, so I think that uh, films in general, uh, even the most horrific films, uh, need to be preserved and need to be seen so we can feel, uh, so we can be educated. Um, my experience with Gone with the Wind is a little bit different than you both. I had, I, I'd actually had seen the film uh, decades ago. It was a, about the time where I was first getting passionate about classic films. And you cannot avoid Gone with the Wind. If you were to consider its placement and its influence and the steps that this film took to progress film in general, it is it is quite an achievement, regardless of of the subject matter. Watching um, watching the film back then, however, um, it was the first classic film that ever gave me a headache, uh, a full on a full on migraine, which I remember to this day. But having watched the film again more recently, uh, I had a, a different, uh, perhaps more more wise, if I dare say, uh, appreciation for it. Um, so regardless of the subject matter, if you take the film on a technical level, it is a wonder. Uh, the the color use in that film, now this is 1939. Now color had been out for a couple of years, but it was really this film and The Wizard of Oz. They both came out the same year. Both were uh, mainly helmed by the same director and both films had an extraordinary 
use of color, but Gone with the Wind especially. Some of the, the silhouettes that I've never seen red more vibrant in any film beyond Gone with the Wind. The way that this film was shot, it's breathtaking. Now top it up with the music by Max Steiner. I mean, the opening scene of this movie with the with the title just flying across the screen shows a, a, a sense of confidence that, that was just just incredible. It does over overtake you. What I find interesting, though, going back to what TJ, what you just said about uh, Scarlett O'Hara, it's it's interesting what they what Gone with the Wind did with her, her journey, I guess, from a petulant child to the hardships that she um, that she went through to becoming and maybe a bit of ahead of its time a successful businesswoman. Um, regardless of that, her the qualities that this character had, I think that any any other film would have played, may have played the safe route and cast Olivia de Havilland's character as the main protagonist. Because Scarlett O'Hara, in many ways, is kind of the villain of the piece. <laughs> I mean, in, in all seriousness, she's there to break up a happy family. And I don't want to say evil, but de- de- there's definitely malintent there. You can say evil. I think that's realistic. She She meant no goodwill. Um, you know, her, the only needs that, that needed to be met were hers. So, you know, when you when you when you when you look at it, uh, and and we're we're going to dissect it now. Let's call her what she is. She's that she's that villain. I mean, it's not to the point to where you look at this movie and say, you know, she's of the level of Cruella, Cruella de Vil, where you know you look at the movie and say, hey, that is, you know, the villain. But she's. She's whiny, you know the, the the attitude, all that. It it goes with that 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 out, dare I say millennial uh, consistency. I mean, it's kind of wild to to think that it's all about her, but that's where we're at. Let's be perfectly clear: Scarlett's the one that's naive enough at the end of the day to still think throughout three hours and forty something minutes of this damn film that she still got a shot at Ashley. Are you effing kidding me right now? After all the S that goes down and she finally, finally, like, you know, has that one moment where actually nothing actually happened, of course. But, you know, back in 1939 and before, oh, it was scandalous that they was hugging, you know, (laughs) you know, um, I I, (laughs) you thought that was going to like throughout the movie. I'm like, nah. (laughs) <laughs> you, the, the mix between air quotes independent calculating uh, a potential villain and then also someone who's that damn dumb to still think it works to still waste her time accordingly is a character that basically openly insults me now what i will say is <laughs> the look of scarlett o'hara she kind of has those uh black widow praying mantis eyes uh, I picked those uh, particular uh, breeds of animal because once the mating is done, uh, what they do to their mates is, uh, let's just say, consume them. And while she may not have literally cut off their head and eaten their bodies, she certainly did consume those that would be her husband throughout the movie. Now, look uh, at the color scheme because she's, especially towards the end of the film, she's bathed in blacks and, and reds. So that comparison is is apt beyond belief. You touch upon the the biggest issue that I have with the film. Because if you were to say, okay, if you were to take the film right before the intermission, up until Atlanta's burning, she's destitute, I'll never go hungry again, and then cue intermission. Up until that moment, uh, despite the subject matter, and we'll, we'll get on that in a, little, in a little bit, but up until that moment, I was with that film. Uh, it was a growth from, like I said before, a petulant child to uh, losing everything and becoming independent and growing up. Uh, I was with it up until that point. I'm this is a five star masterpiece. I get it. Uh, the second half is, despite having some great scenes in it, in and of itself, is where the film falls apart. Is once she becomes a successful businesswoman, once she starts um, uh, regrowing the plantation uh, during Reconstruction, and she goes back to the um, to the romantic love triangle, Black Widow snare. 
uh, where I lose a film, like you've you've matured beyond this point. And if you haven't, I, I've I've kind of lost interest. Now that being said, that could be attributed to her hubris, to the true extent of which, like you know, I, I think TJ said earlier that she was thirsty, and that you referred to her as a Cardassian. No, 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 no. It's going to be Paris Hilton or Nicole Richie. Let's be clear, okay? And 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 that's the kind of at least at some point, Kardashian's a good businesswoman where she's having somebody sell an app. Uh, of her and all this other stuff whereas the other two that i mentioned um just fall back into their own ways and keep getting we're into the news for a long time just doing whatever shenanigans and 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 you know the only way they could snare themselves loose was to do i don't know to eat a hamburger in a bikini on a car um but i i say all that to say um her hubris to be like okay i made it again so where's ashley you know now that she's achieved what she's needed to, she can go back to being a kid again, basically. Things I never thought would come up uh, during a Gone with the Wind conversation. Uh, 300 uh, and women on uh, cars eating hamburgers. Uh, you've you've okay. made my evening, gentlemen. <laughs> What's my Maui picture? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you're, you're right when you say hubris. You're, you're right about it. And it is a portrait of a flawed character. And, and that's something I do appreciate about the film very much. But... Um, it, it does go go back towards the length of the film, and when you have an entire last half of the film, another two hours where this character trait is dragged out quite a bit, it does uh, compound um, the tolerance you may have for such a character. And I have no problems with long movies. Hell, I I love the Ten Commandments, and it's it's freaking longer if you can believe it. I mean, Gone with the Wind is two minutes shy of four hours. I mean, <laughs> uh, so it really comes down to storytelling. What are some things you actually did like about the film? Taking the subject matter out of it, whenever I look at this movie, I see the colors. You were talking about, you know, towards the end of the movie, she's, you know, fully out in black and dark reds at the beginning. You know, that dress that she's so adamant that she wears is white and green. And we think about green as, as young. And, and, and so it goes to, uh, the the concept that we're talking about the the, the colors kind of you know go along with the maturity of the main character, um, and then you know the music and it all it all lends itself. It did the job. Now, granted, we, I mean, it's a, you know, four hour movie, it could have been done you know in a lot less, but you know for for the four hours, I mean, I felt like they did a you know a fairly good job of telling the story from their point of view. I can say this in one word, and while there may have been some scandalous stuff, you could certainly link him to Rhett Butler was an amazing character. I don't care who you are. That guy in the corner who who was the two voices of reason throughout the film were Mammy and Rhett Butler. Golly, if someone could have just said to me, look, just watch these two. And it would still amount to about an hour of screen time, I'm sure. <laughs> but just watch these two. F the rest of the movie. Scarlet does some stupid stuff that'll piss you off anyway. You know, no, I'm joking. But um, the Red, Red and Mammy are, are the two, easily the two best things to watch. And I mean, you know, uh, like like TJ cited um, how she'll talk under her breath. Like, you know, something like, must be crazy. You know, stuff like <laughs> What, 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 with her in place as the voice, voice, voice of reason, and how much guidance she did, despite being in what could be uh, a, a a subordinate role, to say the least. I'll use a, uh, I'll use that term to go for now. And then the actual, um, the symbol that was done very well, where um, she's given the fancy petticoat and ends up wearing it later to basically visually demonstrate the regard that she had within that house and 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 to kind of show how she had elevated herself in the eyes of red at least um was really cool i i liked how the two of them connected as characters um and hattie hattie mcdaniel she won um i mean she her performance is not only extraordinary one of the best in in the film and deservedly so she she won the first ever Academy Award for an African American actor, um, and yeah, she deserves it. Which is also uh, ironic because she would later go on to co-star with the first uh, African American male to ever win one 
in Song of the South, another uh, film that's also been uh, touted as very controversial nowadays. Uh, although where Song of the South has been banned, um, Gone with the Wind is still out there. It's it's almost a shame in a way that uh, in an effort, I guess, to mollify the the controversies with such a film that you have with both of these films, they have two landmark performances that have been kind of mollified to the annals of history. When you're talking about someone who worked in the house, there's a certain thing that you expect from them. And when I saw the new house later on in the film and they say, you know, we rich now, it, it's crazy, you know, to see, to look at it through their eyes. Cause I mean, they didn't, they didn't own that house. That's where they worked, you know what I'm saying? But they, they took ownership of it. So she understood her situation and she owned it. She owned it. She felt in her, she felt she ran that house, you know what I mean? And that, regardless of whether her name was on the deed or not, she felt that she ran the house. And so when you watch it, when I watch it, I felt the pride that she had with what she had. She didn't have anything that she could call her own, but what she did have, she owned it and she made it hers. So for her to put so much of herself, I felt like she put herself into the character whenever she played Mammy. So yeah, phenomenal job. And we touched a little bit about this during our Casablanca review of all of all things, uh, about how um how this film was starting to get banned in a couple of theaters and screenings because it was, I think the New York Post actually put an article touting it as a Confederate monument that needs to get banned. Now, nowadays, listen, I'm not a big um I, I'm not a I don't jump on the bandwagon of of outrage in general. I mean, if you were to do that, I mean, uh, Kyle, you sent me an article recently about how right. 16 candles should be banned because of of this or that. I, I don't jump onto the bandwagon of, of faux outrage. If we were to look at films in general, I'm not even talking about old films. If we look at films from 10 years ago. Uh, we can find problems. Give me five minutes and I'll tell you how The Wizard of Oz is the worst film of all time, if you look at things that way. You can find problems with almost anything that you look at if you look for it. I look at the big picture, I look at intent, and I look at, you have to take things into account of when they came out. You cannot condemn a film in the past based on today's glasses. Uh, you have to take it, you have to take it as a portrait of its time. Yes, we have progressed quite a bit nowadays, and we can appreciate uh, our our where we are today and where things were in the past. Imagine if you can take a snapshot, or if you can actually film uh, a scene of Shakespeare's plays back in the 1600s, or you can uh, film any ancient Greek play and actually have that preserved for history. Yes, you'd find a lot of problems. You'd find a lot of things that today would be considered uh, disgusting, um, but it's a piece of history. And this is a snapshot of, of the way that such stories were told in 1939. Yes, we can find a lot of problems with it. Yes, we can talk about it. Yes, we can use it as a, dare I say, teaching tool. But I am fully against banning it, and I have little respect for people that want to uh, condemn something without even having watched said thing. I have no tolerance for people like that. If, I, if I'm if i going to go out and say that Twilight is a piece of shit film, well, guess what? I should actually watch Twilight and have those sparkles <laughs> burn into my retinas before I say any damn thing about it. <laughs> well, I'll add this too, man. Um, from a movie we both admire, thank you, for, thank you for smoking. What I'm worried about is that the point of view of those who are suggesting that are much like the the senator from Vermont in that movie. But in essence, aren't you changing history? No, I think we're improving history. Not about that life. Well, that's it in a nutshell. But I don't know. I guess the question should be, I mean, should this, this I mean, should it be banned from screenings? No. My reasoning is because I want to see y'all playbook. And when I say y'all, I don't mean... You guys in particular, I'm talking about people who believe in that lifestyle and the believe that we should be back in the time period where uh, people of color are beneath white folks. So when I say I see I, I want to see your playbook, I mean exactly that, because the thing about it is 
history tends to repeat itself. So what y'all were doing in 1939 to try and keep black folks under your thumb, you will do. It might be a new high tech version of it to go to 2017, but you will repeat. So for no other reason, I wanted the movie to be out there so I can see what's going on. But I can see the other side. If I am outraged about slavery and I say, you know, that's America's greatest shame and we should draw attention to it. And someone looks at me and says, nah, man, you need to get over slavery. Then I, my response then is, well, why are we still watching Gone with the Wind? Because that movie glorifies that time period. I, if I can't be upset about it, then you can't be you can't be proud of it. I mean that that I mean basically it's like it's a shame that needs it, it wants to be forgotten for the negative, but accepted for the positive, and that 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 doesn't work for me. If I say that I'm upset because it happened, and you say, "Well, get over it," but yet we're going to honor a statue, that I mean again, it, it there's too much inconsistency. There's too much inconsistency, you know, with regard to how we're allowed to look at that time period so i can see why some people would want to have that movie stricken but on both sides because if you're if you're against the whole concept of seeing repeated racism then you're like okay i just don't want to see it if you are even if you're pro but yet you don't want that movie out there because you don't want the american consciousness to be reminded of that time period i can see so much and there's like so much stuff I want to say and I'm looking at Kyle and he's got a bewildered look on his face and I want to make it make sense to you fella but there's so much going on in me right now so many emotions when it comes to this whole conversation of race that it's hard to lay it all down at, at one time because I don't want to come off as the angry black man but when it comes to talking about racism and you're talking to uh, uh, a generation of people that would much rather forget it because they'll say, well, I wasn't there. So I shouldn't have to be held responsible for my ancestors. But do you believe right? that the people that are going up against, um, the people that are saying they want to ban Gone with the Wind and so forth and so on, that that's really just putting a Band-Aid on, on an issue so you can, they can feel better about themselves. But banning Gone with the Wind is not going to change the the actual issues that we're facing at the moment. It's, and I I don't honestly believe that this film from 1939, out of the blue, just today, started you know inspiring you know white supremacists. I is this is this the people that are doing this, the people that are advocating to ban this this one film? Do you think that they're just losing sight of what the real issues are? I think the people have been upset about stuff for a very long time, and it's not until now that they feel like their voice actually carries a little bit of weight because of social media. I think the people have been upset about things for a very long time, but they didn't have a voice before. So now it seems like people are outraged about every little thing that happened, but it's only because we've given a voice to so many people. But to the point about the Band-Aid, yes, I think... If someone successfully banned this movie, it would be putting a Band-Aid on it because this country is not prepared to tackle the issue. We're not prepared as a country to truly look in the mirror and accept the fact, one, that we have an issue about race in this country and then going through the proper steps to fix it. So the powers that be will allow this movie to be banned because they know that this country is not prepared to truly rip the Band-Aid off and start healing. So is it possible to make a movie about the Civil War time without mentioning racism? I mean, about without mentioning slavery? No, if you're going to do it right, if you're going to be historically accurate, yes, you have to mention it, but it does not have to be the focus of the film. Great. You can't escape the topics following. Plantations. Those people of any color or creed that were on them, be them the owners or the slaves, the use of language that they had there, words that started with the letter end, were prolific. And though we don't like it, they were a fact of that time. I still don't understand 
when Django Unchained was made. It's about a slave who escapes and a man who empowers himself. And yet, when the N-word comes up because it's historically accurate for them to do so, there's an uproar. But if they don't do it, they're just as whipped. That's that's not uh, that's a double standard to the art form that pretty much will kill making any art from this time period now of a particular sort, particularly movies is what I'll say. Movies now, because of their mass appeal and because uh, of, of the way that they are uniquely nitpicked, be it by the interwebs or whatever it is that they're exposed to, if you, if you don't do it, it's going to be seen as doing it wrong. It's damned if you do, damned if you don't. I do find it really funny when, uh, you know, we've gotten to the point where um, to kill a mockingbird is being banned in schools because of the use of that word. And to those people that, are, that follow that, I'm like, do you not understand the intent of, of this book? Do you not understand the intent of the use of this despicable word in that book? You know, you're not, you can't sugarcoat history. You just, you, you really can't. You can't improve history. Exactly. If you want to make a Civil War movie, you want to make it somehow around time. I don't know why you would want to do that. But if you wanted to, you know, do, you know, the Confederates versus the Union versus zombies, whatever you want to do, have to be a movie focused on slavery where slavery did take place and you're going to acknowledge that it happened. Right. Uh, so we're not we're trying to whitewash it. We're not trying to act like it didn't happen. We're accepting that it happened, but we're not trying to focus on that because that's not what the movie is about. I think you just uncovered a an untapped genre here: the Civil War rom com. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I I'm what the wind was. The title is going to be called Civil Forfeiture. It'll be fantastic. Um, nice. <laughs> I thought that Django, and if you've ever seen my man cave, I've got a huge Django poster in my man cave because i love that film and when it comes to being graphic that film was very graphic and how it showed the treatment of slaves and and gone with the wind wasn't nearly wasn't even even within a stone's throw of what we saw with django so i don't think that gone with the wind did anything wrong with regard to their depiction of slavery i think more than anything if there's outrage about it it's more that they seem to be it's it's a a love letter for the for the confederate i think that ultimately i mean it's it's taking it from their side and it's showing them happy and having parties and if we think about it the confederates were trying to tear the united states apart they were trying to separate the country to make it two separate so why are we happy and thinking about them in this positive light when had they succeeded, the country in the United States would not be what we have today. I think if, if, I'm trying, because I'm trying to put myself in the mindset of someone who does not want this movie to be seen. That is the only thing that I can try and and wrap my mind around as being a, re, a, a response as to why they don't want this movie seen. It's not the slavery aspect, because they did it as tastefully as you possibly could during a time when they didn't have to be tasteful. Good call. See, this you know, is, they didn't have to be tasteful. This is why I really enjoy having well, conversations with, with the both of you, because you take the time to try to look at things on both sides and figure things out. Um, and generally generally speaking, um, this is, this is if, if there's one positive thing that a film, and this is this one positive thing that can be taken from any controversial film, is the fact that, you know, by by the fact that it exists and the fact that it's out there that we can actually be having these conversations and actually have a uh, use whatever whatever negative attribute you can attach to a film or itself ha uh, generates the fact that we can actually tw twist it into a positive and actually have a conversation about it that crosses the aisles is 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 a wonderful thing I think. Well, let me say this, Demos. This is something my dude is used to doing on his show with Robin Lynn Vandenberg talking shiz that comes on Block Talk Radio show shortly after ours at about 1030 normally when Robin is in the fold. Currently, she's on leave, but there's your shout, TJ. This is why he makes it look good. He does it on a regular basis. Hashtag Troubadour Pipes. Anyway, here's the thing, TJ. 
everything you said about I want to see their playbook makes a ton of sense. And as big as my ego is, there's no way in hell even I thought of that. However, if that's the playbook you're looking to play uh, break down, it's not as quite bad as looking at the Cleveland Browns playbook, but you're looking at a pretty crappy <laughs> playbook, homie. Like, uh, can we be clear about something? What is Red Butler doing throughout the first part of the movie? He's trolling the shit out of the Confederate movement. Okay? Let's be clear about that. And, and, and can we see that, 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 like, all I see when I see that movie and the actual um, presentation of the Confederate movie was, again, the hubris in question that was possessed then by the entire CSA and thinking, oh, hell yeah, we're going to do this war. We're going to whoop up on the Union boys. We're going to have our own nation. Well, let's party. And they're, they're like, <laughs> right up to 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 uh, just before Atlanta's burning, they're talking about going to parties. They're escaping wearing gorgeous gowns and dresses. Like, listen, am I only one? Am I the only one that just said they trolled the shit out of how smart or not smart uh, the Confederate aristocracy was to think they could pull all that off? Am I the only one that that saw it that way? Are you hinting, Mr. Butler, that the Yankees can lick us? No, I'm not hinting. I'm saying very plainly that the Yankees are better equipped than we. They've got factories, shipyards, coal mines, and a fleet to bottle up our harbors and starve us to death. All we've got is cotton and slaves and arrogance. Hey, listen, if I'm the problem, I'll step back. But, dude, like, somebody was over... I don't know that the, the, that Gone with the Wind in the book did it this way, but Red, oh, oh, Brett Butler over here with his tongue in his cheek... And the imagery of seeing, hey, let's party. And then they get to war and their ideals get slapped around like a redheaded stepchild. Oh, well, Ashley's redheaded. Bad choice of words. Actually, no, wait. He's a Confederate officer. Appropriate. So, <laughs> like a redheaded stepchild? Bruh, I get trying to get the playbook. And I get trying to, 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 to protect you and your livelihood. Uh, you, the community protecting their livelihood like that. Um, you even in particular, um, with experiences that I know you've had personally, um, checking the playbook, is something that I know you would get a lot of value of here, find a better team. <laughs> All right. So you, you, you make the point, you bring in the Cleveland Browns and it's almost hilarious that I would try to justify wanting to look at the Cleveland Browns playbook. But the one thing that I have to say is regardless of whether you have an IQ of a Fortune 500 uh, CEO, uh, a Bill Gates, as it were, or if you've got the the IQ of uh, some trailer park fella down the street that, ne- that didn't amount to you know a third grade education, if you have hate towards someone who looks like me, I want to know how you think. Because whether I, I, if you're going to come at me intellectually or if you're going to come at me with just brute hate, I need to know how you think. So that playbook that I'm talking about, yes, it's not the, 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 it's not the, mo- it's not the most successful playbook because <laughs> they did lose. They got one. But still, I need to know how you think because I need to be able to Imagine how my opponent, imagine how my opponent is going to come at me before they come at me. I got to be prepared for the genius as well as the fool. So even if it's obvious that they got stopped, you want to see what stopped them so obviously. Okay, and I I can, I can, (laughs) you're using the the Cleveland Browns playbook and you're going to look at it and say, okay, here's an example of how they did it. And if they try to do this again, it'll be easy to stop with this. I got you. Okay. I, I, I listen. I, I I completely understand that. I, I got no problem with that. But can we please now speaking specifically to those who would want to ban the film? Because I didn't start with them, TJ. Because your point was far more intelligent than any of these goofballs that want to do that. Okay, no one in this banning thing saw what I saw. That this is actually <laughs> like the caricature, uh, for lack of a better way to describe it. It, it, it's borderline on satire. Some of the silliness, silliness they're trying to do with throwing parties and all this other stuff when Atlanta's about to burn. 
And the only the only reason why I can so clearly say that is because the Rhett Butler character is there to talk about these fools are about to go to war and they're going to throw parties. Like he does everything short of short of saying, "Hang in his fingers, motherfucker! You're a moron." Okay, that was given to you at, to t- say out loud and abruptly. Hey, they're gonna blow it. In case you aren't up on history, they're gonna blow it, and they blew it because they're stupid. This is the level of stupid that does the kind of stupid that they did. I'm actually gonna take the a step farther because you know one of the things, and I'm not sure if this was the intent. It probably, for all I know, probably was. But one of the things I read from the film is that the Scarlett O'Hara character is herself a representation of the South. Her <laughs> her 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 fall, her her rise, and then her fall again. It's the hubris of the character is is the South. Everything that's that was wrong with the Confederacy, you can see in this character. You just blew my mind, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Bro. Thank you. I'm sorry. No. I didn't mean to throw you off your game. You just, my mind is blown now, bro. It's... But that's, you know, that's one of the things that I that, that I take away a, away from it. Um and maybe it's maybe partly it's due uh, to the fact that I I try to look at things from both perspectives. I try to look at the positive, try I try to look at the negatives. And yes, a lot of the negatives in Gone with the Wind are are blatant. I want to look beyond that and and try to understand where things come from. And that's one of the reasons I advocate against the the censorship or banning of anything to go with what you said, TJ, as far as knowing the other's playbook, well, yeah, I think that's very important. So why do we want, you know, why would we take steps to ban the people we disagree with? We, I want to, I want, I want every single, you know, asshat out there that says anything vile. I want them to say, is able to say it as loud and as clear so we can point and say, look, there's the asshat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the moment, the moment you, you can never, you can never, uh, squash thoughts. You can never eradicate bad thoughts. And the moment you try to suppress them and they go underground, then they can strike like a snake. And I don't like snakes. I'm like Indiana Jones. I hate snakes and I hate Nazis. So it works out very well for me. <laughs> Knew you were going to do that. <laughs> Dude, if, if, if I can say, with, the, with, with regard to the people that want to have the film banned, I look at them as, as, as twofold. You're either that sheep that doesn't want to think about the negative that this country has had in its past, or you're a part of the powers that be that wants the rest of the population to be like the sheep that doesn't think about the history so that you can continue to run that hustle and continue to keep them bent over and, 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 and oppressed. You know, knowledge is how we break the cycle. And continuing to do the same thing, continue to go to work, come home, fill your mind with nonsense, which is what a lot of stuff is now. It disarms you and it makes you it makes you weaker. So for me, I look at this as an exercise in in building my army up because I, I'm, I'm learning how things were back in the day. I'm learning where my people were how we were seen how i was seen you know how i would have been perceived in that time and now whenever i see certain things or i'm put in certain situations where if i look at a contract and i don't like the literature of a contract it's because i can say some somewhat this is a subtle way to bring back an oppression that has been gone for a long time we have to be willing to watch stuff that's not necessarily comfortable so that we can learn from it and not have history repeat itself. Well, with that being said, I guess now we have to get to the big question of the of the night is, is that Gone wind. with the Wind required viewing? And Kyle, I'm going to go to you first. So whether or not it's required reading, that's see Viewing. Here, I, I'm calling required reading because it's supposed to be a, a, hilari- a hilarity by default thing that it's called required reading because it's a joke. Because life is hilarious by default. So, all right, all right. Stop sucking my d- Tell me why. <laughs> what? Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. 
Son. Flaming. Yes, sir. He's throwing that heat. Of all the people I thought I was going to be checked on, checked by on this episode, it wasn't this f-ing guy. He's throwing that heat, baby. That was nice. Which, by the way, if, if we could be honest, man, hey, listen, this is another moment where, where I'm having to speak on a topic where I have no credibility whatsoever, and TJ took me seriously. Um, so there you go. <laughs> but that all being said, listen, man. Um, so as far as it being required viewing, um, I haven't said no a lot, but I'm going to here, and let me tell you why. Um, as a piece of filmmaking, for the love of Pete, no. Listen. Maybe I'm the problem, and I'm not even one of those millennials that allegedly lack work ethic, okay? Four hours? Bleep you, son, okay? I had to stop this thing twice to get through it because I had to go get something to eat to stay my ass awake. And oh, by the way, the second half of the film, the way you executed killing their daughter, spoiler alert, um, yeah, not about that life. You don't do that to a dude that has a three-year-old daughter during the movie. I mean, I know they didn't hunt me down and say, hey, Kyle, look, we're going to do this. And probably the single most, like, that I found more insensitive than a lot of other things in this movie. Uh, I was just like, damn, like, she fell off the horse. You use this really shitty dummy to portray that. And the next cut is a goddamn small coffin. F- you. That anyway. is the Bronte melodrama that you were alluding to earlier. <laughs> That's some shit, though. You're absolutely right. Now, if you want a film that is a study of 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 uh, Confederate principles, this isn't a good film because a lot of trolling goes on, as I alluded. If you want a film that's a great story, Scarlett O'Hara is completely unrealistic. But then again, maybe that's why she's a caricature of the South and you blew TJ's mind. And if you want something other than visual beauty, I don't think this movie delivers it. I'm sorry. All right. So with regard to it being uh, required reading, because of its, because of the way that it was filmed, and as a movie that I just feel like people should watch, if you call yourself a cinephile, no, I don't think this required reading for that reason. Now, with re- with it being a portrait of Americana at that time, um, I'm going to tell my children that they should watch it. It's going to be something that I want them to watch because I want them to see that. I want my kids to know what's going on with history. I'm not saying that they should watch it because it's a great film. I like I would suggest that they watch Shawshank because it's a great film. I'm not saying that I suggest that they watch uh, Gone with the Wind because it's a good film. I think they should watch it again because I want them to be uh, woke to where things have come from. Um, if you are a person who just like this, likes to see uh, white people in conflict <laughs> and and then and then subsequently die. Um, and you don't feel like watching horror movies, then yes, this is a good picture for you. Um, plenty, plenty, plenty of white folks die in this film. That is so. Um, so, with regard to it being, like I said, no, it's not required reading. Um, to the to the general um, idea of why the show, the why this show gets down, and why I was originally uh, invited a couple months ago. No, it's not. But I still think that people should watch it. Uh, just so that they can understand where this country has come from. I'm going to do the thing that always drives Kyle Nash nuts, and I'm going to give uh, two... You're going to the foundation argument. Stop yes, up. I'm going to make the foundation argument. <laughs> I think it's required viewing for a certain group of people. One aspect of this group would be anybody that advocates against the film. You have to make the basis on fact and not what you read somebody else say about it. I'm not going to review a movie I haven't seen because I would be dishonest. You know, I'm not going to read a Roger Ebert review and because he said it was bad, I'm going to say it's bad. That's, you know, why, you know, that's that's disgraceful. Um, number 2, if you want to study classic film, Gone with the Wind is a necessity at a technical level. It redefined quite a bit. I mean, that one scene, the burning of Atlanta is I think holds up almost to this day. It's such an intricate scene, which, by the way, they burnt down the sets to King Kong 
um, <laughs> to film that scene, which I guess if you want another reason to hate the film, that might be another reason. And I don't know if I can argue that one. Um, oh, I'm sad. Yeah, if in, it's not it's not my favorite film of 1939. However, it is on a technical level, it is probably the best. I'd even say maybe an edge better on a technical level than even Wizard of Oz. Both of those films are incredible when it comes to color evolution in film. Um, but is it my favorite of 1939? No, I, there are some other movies I think were much better told, had much more interesting stories, uh, but maybe they weren't as visually arresting. Uh, I would go towards Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. So I would say, I mean, to the average person, this isn't a film that I think, uh, that I think would appeal to everybody at the time. The, the you know, four-hour movie requires some sort of commitment. It's a milestone when it comes to that, for better or for worse. So I would say yes. Uh, for the average person, no, it's, I wouldn't consider a required viewing. But for anybody interested in, in film, in, in American history, yeah, yeah, by far it's required viewing. I agree. You're I agree already- with you. Um, if, if, you, if you're going to call yourself a student of classic film, I think that you do have to see that film because it's, it's a classic film. I mean, that's, it, it's, it's gone with the wind. All right, gentlemen. Well, thank you. Thank you both for coming on. TJ, uh, as always, it's always a pleasure getting you on and getting that different perspective. Um, and I look forward to having you on for for uh, whatever our next required viewing is going to be. If you guys have suggestions, please let us know in the comments below. And let us know, do you guys think that Gone with the Wind is required viewing? Do you guys think that we're a bunch of racist assholes? You know, let, let us know. Please don't dox oh, us. No. I'm that guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> or if you guys, even more importantly, you know, want to join in on the conversation and turn this into something positive, let us know in the comments below. And TJ, where, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter and Snapchat at TokyoJ. That's T-O-K-E-O-J. Mr. Shock and all, man. I have so much fun with you guys. Thanks for having me on, bro. Always a pleasure. And uh, Kyle, where can we find you? Hey, uh, you can find me on Twitter at the SOTG. And of course, you can find me on Facebook as the student of the game, where I'm still covering one of the four remaining teams that are undefeated in college football in the United States for the Knights. It's a good time all the way around. They travel to Philadelphia to face Temple in the upcoming week, so I will not be in that press box. But... I will be in the press box for the Friday after Thanksgiving for the war on I-4, USF versus UCF. Good times all the way around. And when I do that, you'll find it on NGSCSports.com. And, hey, let me throw that shout one more time because he didn't do it for himself. Check out my dude talking. Uh, just talking. What is it? It's, talking. It's, it's, it's talking. It's talking that ish <laughs> with Robin Lynn Vandenberg. Listen, I was on there last week um, despite – uh, uh, Tokyo uh, and his NFL ban. He wanted to bring me in for NFL related social topics. And um, while it was controversial, and I had a couple of things where I'm like, I might get destroyed, <laughs> um, I, I had a great time and it was a really productive conversation. So if you like conversations that can get productive on the top social issues, check that mess out. It's a wonderful thing. Hashtag Tribador Pipes. And, um, yeah, Demos, this was a good one, man. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. And of course, of course, you can find me on HilarityByDefault.com for weekly movie reviews and other fun stuff. On Twitter, Hilar- uh, Default Hilarity. And on Facebook, Hilarity by Default. Uh, thanks again for joining, guys. And remember that life is hilarious by default. <laughs>